Good morning. I'm Jay Woodruff, a member of the Parish Committee. We're glad you are here either online or in person here in our beautiful sanctuary on this special day. A special welcome to visitors. Uh, our mission is to build community, search for meaning, deepen our spirituality, and make a better world. To learn more about First Parish or Unitarian Universalism, please visit uuwayland.org or contact Kate Holland, Director of Lifespan Education and Engagement. Please also reach out to a member of the Parish Committee or to Reverend Stephanie if you have ideas or questions about First Parish. Um, the uh, Middlesex County uh, low risk for COVID. And I can see most of, uh, many of you are complying with, with that. Uh, please join me now in taking a moment to say hello to one another. And to those online, welcome again and let our service begin. Jill and Melody want to come, and Matt want to come up. And while well, they're coming up, and you're going back, thank you, Bells. You guys are really good. <laughs> okay. As this is my last Sunday leading the service here, you may think today is all about me. But in my mind, the key theme of today is we. Celebrating what we 
have done together for these past nine years. To that end, I have invited several folks to join me in this reading for our opening words from the Reverend Dr. Mark Morrison Reed. The central task of the religious community is to unveil the bonds that bind each to all. There is a connectedness, a relationship discovered amid the particulars of our own lives and the lives of others. Once felt, as she said, uh, once felt, it inspires us to act for justice. It is the church that assures us that we are not struggling for justice on our own, but as members of a larger community. The religious community is essential. For alone, our vision is too narrow to see all that must be seen, and our strength too limited to do all that must be done. Together, Together our vision widens and our strength is renewed. <laughs> I now invite the Chapman Kenny family to light the chalice once I get some flame. We laugh, we cry. Again, it's a we hymn about the fullness of what we do together as a community. And it was also the hymn we sang on my very first Sunday here. Um, so please rise in body or in spirit for 354.
100 years ago, in 1923, World War I had been over for nearly five years. But throughout Europe, remnants of destruction remained upon buildings, landscapes, and the too many missing men who did not return from war. This plaque, if you didn't know, is dedicated to the soldiers of World War I. Against the backdrop of so much lingering sorrow, the Reverend Norbert Kopek of the Unitarian Church in Prague created a flower ceremony. He invited people to bring a flower to a shared bouquet, then asked for each person to leave with a different flower. Exchanging flowers testified to the capacity of all of us to bring beauty and to receive beauty. In a world bearing wounds of violence, such reciprocity of beauty and care heals. The Reverend Chopek also wrote more than 90 hymns, including one that counsels, kindle the flames of love where people's sorrows reign, tell the happy story of those who overcame sorrow. Smell the flowers of faith, breathe the air of love, open your soul to the streaming rays of the sun. Kindle the flames of love. In the face of known hardship and an experience of a great war, Chopek held face fast to his faith in love. I think I've told you the story of uh, how I wrote a short story in sixth grade in which a girl proclaims to her mother, I know how to solve the world's problems, love. For years, I was embarrassed by my youthful naivety that the solution could be so simple. And yet here is the Reverend Chopek also extolling the value of love. And so also Lydia Mariah Child wrote, the cure for all the ills and wrongs, the cares, the sorrows, and the crimes of humanity all lie in that one word, love. It is the divine vitality that everywhere produces and restores life. For many, the power of love is no small thing. And what does it mean to love? In my very first online sermon, delivered not in 2020, but in a snowed out Sunday in February 2015, I shared my favorite definition of love from philosopher Diogenes Allen. Love is the recognition of otherness. Love is recognizing the humanity of those who differ from you, of those with whom you may disagree or just not like. Love is opening yourself to really recognize that the stranger and your beloved both hold their own value apart from what they are to you. Being part of a religious community like First Parish is an immersive education in love. In each sharing of joys and sorrows in a worship service, we are kindling the flames of love as we bear witness to the story another brings. And when we work together for fair elections, an end to racism, or for full medical care for women or transgender folks, we are fostering the divine vitality that restores the fullness of life for all. Learning to live in love is no small thing. Kindling the flames of love transforms each of us and changes the world. In no way could I say all that is on my heart today. And so in the end, I decided to simply share this message of love, a love that sustains us in shared joys and sorrows. 
Yes, there have been many programs and meetings in all manner of events and worship services these past nine years. And the vital thread woven through it all is love. Together we have learned more about what it means to love across our differences, about how to love across the internet when we could not be together in person, and about how to reach out in acts of love through social justice. Again and again these past nine years, I have witnessed how you show up for one another in hard times and how you have allowed yourself to be healed in care and support amidst difficulty. We have also stood together amidst crowds at the Islamic Center in 2016 and at the corner in front of the meeting house in 2020 as the Paul Revere bell tolled eight and a half minutes for the memory of George Floyd. This, too, is love. The work of love is not done. It does not finish. Sharing this work of love with you these past nine years has transformed and changed me for the better. This is a gift I will carry with me. And even though I will no longer be your minister, I trust you will continue this work of love within and beyond these walls. Thank you for the love you have shown me and for the chance of loving you as your minister. Amen. As an expression for the pictures, I wore mascara, but then I was like, this is going to be a disaster. <laughs> as an expression of gratitude to you, you can take it off. I give you this framed print which commemorates the 100th anniversary of the flower ceremony, titled Czech Flower Alphabet. The image shows 31 Czech flowers encircled by the lyric of the hymn, Kindle the Flames of Love. May its beauty remind you of the ongoing work of love that will sustain us all. more to do today. <laughs> and uh, John Thompson helped me to get this frame, but he didn't know what it was, and now he's in charge of helping to hang it. <laughs> this is the moment of the offering, and as you know, I never write down what I'm going to say, because it is just a moment of gratitude. It is a ritual that says, yes, I want this place to continue. Yes, I'm grateful for what I have received. So it doesn't matter how much you put in the plate. What matters is that you contribute to the life and work of this congregation. And also the offertory. Today is a chance, if you haven't yet, to, you should have a flower sticky in your order of service. And if you, um, don't have one or need another one, um, raise your hand and we'll make sure and get you one. I see Laurel back there, maybe she could help out with that. Um, and um, typically when we do these, this ritual of gratitude, we focus only on the prior year, what's happened. This time we're gonna invite you to do nine years. So during this time of we together, these last nine years, a note of gratitude for something in those past nine years. Um, and also listen to the great music. I mean, it's a double, it's a, I have faith you can multitask. If you need to give online, please do so at uuwayland.org slash donate, or you can use the, the wonderful little QR codes on the orange cards in the pews, or our ushers will now gratefully receive the offering. Thank you.
Well, I'm certainly grateful for that beautiful song. Thank you. Um, my name is Alyssa Lee. I'm the ministerial intern here at First Parish. Um, and as we come to this, the end of this nine years of shared ministry between this congregation and Reverend Stephanie, there's a lot to look back on and celebrate. Now, if you've, as, as Reverend Stephanie said, if you've not had a chance, please take this moment to write down your gratitude for something that you've all shared together as a congregation in these last nine years. And the ushers will come around and, and pick them up. And if you miss the usher, please just raise it and we'll, we'll come get it. If you're online, please feel free to write your gratitude in the chat. So I'll start us off with what my gratitude is. Um, in the two years here at First Parish, um, I'm, I'm grateful for the many volunteers who have helped keep this congregation growing and thriving during COVID lockdown and now after when we're, we're open back up again. Your love and commitment to each other and to this community is evident in the contributions that so many of you make here. We also received a few over the Padlet. I'll read those aloud. Someone wrote, as both a petitioner and retired colleague, I'm grateful for Stephanie's generosity. She often invited me to participate in her ministry in some way, and she was wonderfully gracious whether I said yes or no. I appreciate how much of herself Stephanie gave to First Parish. She will be missed and lovingly remembered. Um, from another person, so I'm grateful for sharing a number of carol scenes with Stephanie, her care with pastoral, pastoral issues that affected me, and her love for my home church. Someone else wrote, her leadership during the pandemic. I'm so grateful for Stephanie's leadership, for both the congregation and the staff. She helped to keep us all connected. And I think we're coming up here with a few more. And then Debbie, you have some as well for the choir. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, I have the collection for the gratitude for members of the choir. Um, yeah, that's better. <laughs> thank you for the accommodation. <laughs> Um, on behalf of choir, uh, we're grateful for singing, uh, having to be live with other choir members and being able to participate in both Music Sundays live. Um, we're grateful for seeing more and more people return after three years of COVID and distance. Very grateful for just the company of others in the congregation. And last but certainly not least, we're, this is, a composite. We are so grateful for Polly's amazing recovery and return to the choir loft and her perpetual grace and resilience. Amen. Okay, um, I'm going to start with Stephanie's smile. Uh, indeed, all the love being invited to be a lay minister, all my friends, community and acceptance, getting to, to know and deepen relationships. I'm gonna start off with some about what this has meant to you personally. In this time, I am grateful for change that pushes new life into my world, seek, allowing me to explore and share my own truths. Autumn already, they're falling, let's say. <laughs> Time flies. <laughs> okay. um, the arms that have wrapped around our family, the light in this room, physical and otherwise, A peaceful place to reflect and think. Great year, love helping. A loving community so close to my house that I am, rem I am reminded daily. Well, this one could apply to a lot of people. I am grateful for you. <laughs> I am grateful for the love and support of the community through the loss of two family members 
and the leadership and support of Reverend Stephanie, this beloved community, a place to stay in uncertain times, a helping hand. Opportunities for volunteers, yay. <laughs> and then a general one, which is kind of a lot of things, sharing of our joys and sorrow, the music, our good, the good sermons we've enjoyed. Friendships with our people, being back in the sanctuary after the pandemic. I'm grateful for coming of age, senior reflections making my children part of this community. Uh, continuity of community, caring, and music. Grateful for all the music in church and online. Standing together at the Islamic Center with folks of all ages. This is a common theme, amazing online services, Zoom. <laughs> and then I'm gonna say, I don't know if Helen's ready, but these are all Stephanie's. So I'm gonna save those for last. Okay. Uh, coming of age and Youth Sundays, a uh, consistent community despite our inconsistency. Uh, Minecraft Sundays. <laughs> uh, quiet moments. Community social action. I am grateful for every time I see one of us reading out, reaching out to help and support one another. Uh, community loving causes. Okay, another good one that sums it all up. Love you. <laughs> so much to say, but the most important is you've shown us what love really means. Resilience, this is for Stephanie, resilience to sustain our congregation through the pandemic. Stephanie's many contributions. My favorite one is Keep kindly, keep, keep kindling, keep sharing, keep listening. Nothing better than a piece of pie. Okay. Read with Rev, learning, becoming more aware. <laughs> this sounds like a song. The very model of a modern Mary minister. <laughs> and this one, for nine years of extraordinary leadership, love, and friendship. It's for Alyssa, for gratitude for Alyssa Lee, our prior, and all our prior ministerial interns, Interfaith Connections, Metro West Climate Solutions, Social Action, Growing to Meet Challenges, and gratitude for all the community events sponsored by the CLC. Bell Choir. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll add a few of my uh, staff. Kate, I don't know where she went. There you are, how do you see? She hides sometimes when she's not forced to stand up front and give a, a story, but she is so much the heart of this place. Um, with the staff. And um, also Karen, whose fingers are on everything um, with communications and so many of our systems. She's an amazing admin. And Polly, it's just such a gift to work with such a talented, funny musician. You guys, we are so lucky in our staff meetings. When she was away, we missed her stories. And also, um, you don't know him, but anybody who works with The Office does is Leo, our bookkeeper. He is amazing. Um, and our nursery, including our two newest, newest nursery staff that stepped in today because our regulars couldn't be here, and that way Kate could be upstairs. And so the staff and um, volunteers. Just, you guys, 
you are the congregation. I remember the, the story I did from my time for all ages, my first Sunday was that, you know, that you know that you do the fingers, you know, here's the steeple, the people, that thing. The people. The people are the church. And um, and within that broad category of volunteers and the people, the leaders, the formal leaders, those who have sat on parish committee, on stewardship and also all those informal leaders, the people who are just quietly reaching out, um, touching base, making sure things stay connected. And the meeting house. I am so grateful for this beautiful place and the deep care that goes into it and continues to go into it. Um, any colleague who has ever seen my office is insanely jealous. <laughs> so. Enjoy this special space, and most importantly, each other. And thank you, choir, for treating us to yet another wonderful piece. Okay, so the main event, time for flower ceremony. I've already said much about it, and so now I just invite you as we come forward to do so mindfully that this is a hundred years of people exchanging beauty, relying on each other, making these commitments of care and reciprocity. Um, I invite you to make this work logistically for we're going to start in the back corner and come up the side. The people on the sides are going to come up first and then go to the back. 
and back to their seats. So we're going to make, this is going to be the circle, right? Out and in. Um, and then so you guys go last. And then the choir is going to go very, very last. Choir, choir, you can't, just make sure not to block the circles. <laughs> okay. Um, and there are two songs we're going to sing today. They're both printed in your order of service, so you don't have to lug a hymnal around. And they're also pretty simple. You might just know them. So you can please, as we process forward, do so mindfully and with great joy as we sing. First, come sing a song with me, and you'll sing, see that it changes to dream a dream, share a rose. And then, now let us sing, and um, it will change. Now let us, uh, the power of faith, power of hope, love, joy. So, and we've got the choir. The choir always keeps us on track. Thank you, choir. So I invite you now to come forward, starting in those back corners forward. And the music, <laughs> please.
Uh oh, we've got Molly. <laughs> this is unscripted, but it's Molly. Oh, oh, I'm hanging on the script. You gotta stop. Yeah. John and I came to this church eight ministers ago. <laughs> Sudbury was its home, the town of Whalen. Beneath the church dome, the stalls over there for horses, you know. Today, we say goodbye to, today we say goodbye. We know how much of a leader she is. Thank you so very, very much. We need you. <laughs> representing all of you. Uh, and I'm Jim Kittendoff here on behalf of the Ministerial Relations Committee. Stephanie, we know that history and sense of place is hugely important to you, mm -hmm. and we want you to take a little bit of that away with you from us. You are now part of our history, our first solo minister, Female minister. <laughs> we had had a few. <laughs> We'd like to have you have a beautiful print of the church. Roger Horan is a phenomenal artist. Thank you. Thanks to I him. Like this. Thanks to you. <laughs> Don't go away, there's more. <laughs> uh, Kathleen Lang is going to present our next gift. <laughs> some, some people know what this is. This, this is a timescape, a special memory of First Parish in Wayland. From the highest point of the church, the steeple, uh, the last time the roof was uh, the roofing was done, we, um, my husband, retrieved the copper uh, plating from the steeple, and this is a timescape showing what gold leaf, solder, copper, and the weather do to something over the years. So a special remembrance, remembrance of this church. Yes, you have to decide. Yes. Well, David, there's a note from it's from David, so to speak. So there. thank you. I love that. Thank you. Suzanne and Laurel are going to continue with our closing blessing of the ministry, and all of you have a part in it. If everybody could get that ceremony up in their order of service, because it's a responsive one and we need you. Mm -hmm. Stephanie. Yeah, I get it. Nine years ago, we welcomed you as our minister here at First Parish. The life of our religious community is fluid and ever-changing. It's full of new visions, new possibilities, and new solutions to a changing world. We have been enriched, and we have grown, 
as you guided us with thoughtfulness and caring through peaceful times of change and also through some very difficult times of change, including a three-year COVID pandemic. Mm -hmm. But today, we must say farewell to you. Could everybody? In order to facilitate a gentle and harmonious transition to a new beginning, we have a ceremony of releasing for all of us. As Stephanie, as time with us ends, do you, the members and friends of First Parish in Wayland, release Stephanie from her role as minister? Yeah. Stephanie. As the time with us ends, do you, do you release First Parish in Wayland from turning to you for ministry and guidance? I do. Everybody? Stephanie, you are hereby released from ministry at First Parish in Wayland when you step away on August 1st. And could we join together for a blessing for Stephanie? May you find joy and happiness in the wondrous possibilities before you. May you be nourished and sustained by the love and the gratitude of all that have known you and will come to know you. May you find peace and kindness in every day. Blessed, Blessed be. <laughs> Thank you. Um, The copper was unexpected, thank you. Um, David's hung out with me, the copper, and David's been hanging out with me in my office for years. And uh, so I, uh, um, it's just it's a pleasure to take a piece of that. Um, and there will be so many pieces of this place that go with me, I can't forget. There's Kleenex everywhere, we're at church, this is good. Um, <laughs> My partner, Bill, who's here today, says his one question when I come home on a Sunday is, did anybody cry? He thinks that's the only measure of a good service. <laughs> He'll deny he has today, but I know he has. Um, <laughs> thank you. And um, it is only fitting that I do the benediction from the rear, but we don't have an elegant way to do this. So just rise and turn with me. <laughs> Oh my. <laughs> I saw the bags. That was not what I was thinking. <laughs> it's awesome. Oh, keep me from, from completely sobbing as I give the benediction, I guess. <laughs> okay, if you're online and you, what I'm talking about, does somebody have a pair they can hear? Kathy, come here. No, just, just stand in front of the quad. Yes, there you go. They're on the camera. <laughs> so, uh, yes. Um, no, okay, this is sticking. Um, nine years ago, when I was ordained, some of you were there as the search committee, I wrote this benediction for my ordination, and I've given it pretty much every Sunday here. And um, my gut says it retires with you. It's, it's the benediction for this ministry in this place. So let me say again. And you can join in if you really want. Sustained by our connections to each other and to all that is holy, let us go and be beyond these walls, bringing more light and life, love and justice to our shared world. Amen. 
And now we're leaving because Mr. Brad Keyes, I believe, is going to be a photographer taking our pictures on the front steps, and that's something that we'll all be able to have a copy of. So please join me as the music leads us out. Oh, come on.